Welcome to Beyond the Data. I'm Dr. Phoebe Thorpe, and here with me today is Dr. Gil Kirsch, Branch Chief of the Rickettsial Zoonosis Branch here at CDC. Thank you so much for joining us, Gil. Thanks for having me. A lot has happened since our session in 2017. Um, for instance, by the end of 2017, we had more tick-borne cases than had ever been reported here at CDC before. Why are we having such an increase in cases? Yes, yeah, so we have seen uh, increases in cases. And in fact, in um, uh, 2018, we published a report called a Vital Signs Report where we looked at cases of uh, tick and mosquito-borne diseases over the last 15 to 20 years. And something we noticed about that is that the tick-borne diseases are increasing every year. Just about every year, there's more than there was the year before. And that analysis covered up to 2016. And as you indicated, those numbers went even higher in 2017. And most of those uh, tick-borne disease cases are Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. However, there are a no number of other uh, tick-borne diseases that uh, are also increasing year after year. Um, so we really see uh, tick-borne diseases as an increasing problem uh, in the United States. As to why this might be happening, of course, it's going to be many reasons combined. One is our um, increased ability to track these diseases. We're, we're getting okay. more reports that way, and that's always a factor in the, in the numbers. Uh, however, beyond that, we also think people are getting exposed to ticks more often. Um, when they go outdoors, we think um, there's more interaction between where people live and where ticks live. So. People are getting more exposure to ticks. And there's also been a number of new um, uh, tick-borne diseases discovered in the last uh, 15 to 20 years. So all these elements combined have led to these increases that we've seen recently. Mm -hmm. And in addition to one of the new, in addition to new diseases, there's also a new tick, an exotic tick uh, here in the United States. Uh, where is the Asian longhorn tick? Where? Where is it, and what is CDC doing to find out what, what might happen because it's here? Right, so the story of the Asian longhorn tick in the United States starts in the fall of 2017, where there was a, a woman in New Jersey who had a pet sheep in her backyard. And um, she noticed a large number of ticks on this sheep, and they didn't really look like ticks she had seen before. So she took it to her local county health department, and they got the New Jersey um, Agriculture Department involved. And eventually, the, the U.S. Department of Agriculture identified this as the Asian longhorn tick, which is a tick we didn't have in the United States. So everyone was quite surprised to see this on this one sheep in New Jersey. And this led to some investigation of where this tick might um, uh, otherwise be. And in 2018, um, it was found in a number of other states, and even week to week, we find it in new locations as people go out and look. So it's been identified um, in 11 states so far, and these are mostly along the East Coast, New York, New Jersey, down into as far um, south as Tennessee and Arkansas. So, um, And this is a, a unique tick in that it can reproduce very easily and produce large numbers of, of ticks that uh, primarily like to feed on livestock. Although in Asia, where it originated, it has been found on people and has been shown to transmit both bacteria and viruses to people and cause diseases. So um, for these reasons, uh, CDC is concerned about this tick and what diseases it might transmit here. So the things that we're doing about it are, um, one is that we're providing more money to states to um, look for this tick and identify where it's located and, and um, how widely it's spread. Um, we're also generating um, a colony of ticks uh, in the laboratory that can be used to study whether or not it can uh, transmit um, germs that cause disease. And we're also doing studies to look at different repellents that might uh, keep this tick away from people and animals. Um, so we have a number of different tacks. We're also looking at what uh, bacteria and viruses might be in the tick. Um, and so far, the good news is we haven't found any um, uh, germs that cause disease in people in this tick in mm -hmm. the United States. But um, it's kind of early days on that, and we're keep continuing to monitor that situation. 
Uh, it's very fascinating, the nude tick. Um, also, I've heard that there's a, there's a, I've been reading about alpha-gal. It's a new kind of disease. It's, a, it's an allergic reaction to red meat uh, that might come, have, happen after a tick bite. What can you tell me about this new allergic reaction, alpha-gal? Yeah, it's kind of an interesting story where um, we're seeing more and more cases of alpha-gal allergy, which is uh, sometimes called red meat allergy. Mm -hmm. And these are um, predominantly in the southeastern United States, although they've been found, these cases are found in Europe and Australia and other parts of the U.S. But um, people who have this allergy, when they eat meat, um, they get a severe allergic reaction, usually three to six hours after they eat the meat. So they don't always associate it with what they've eaten. And this um, allergy turns out to be against a molecule called alpha-gal, which is found in um, mammals, but not in people or um, apes or monkeys. Um, so it's a molecule that people don't have and they get exposed to it and they can have reactions to it. Now, most people eat meat and don't have this reaction. So it was uh, for a while unclear why some people were having this reaction. And what um, the evidence is leading us towards is that um, ticks, when they bite people, can synthesize them to this alpha-gal uh, molecule. And this uh, sensitization leads them to have an allergic response later when they eat meat. Now we're doing some studies with uh, universities and healthcare providers to try to better understand this linkage between the tick bites and the alpha-gal allergy, and we, we hope to better understand that in the future and also to better monitor these cases, which seem to be growing rapidly. Yes, so if people want to know more about it, they could check your website, because I'm sure as you know more, you'll post it. Yes, yeah, and we've yeah. recently updated our yeah. site to include yeah. information about alpha-gal. Yeah, and I, I was looking at your site because uh, as preparation for this, uh, the you have a lot of good information. I really like the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever course. What else, what else is there for healthcare providers? Yeah, so one of our um, you know, most popular and useful items that we have on the website is called the uh, Tick-Borne Disease Manual of the United States. So this is a, a reference guide for healthcare providers, which um, goes into a lot of information about the tick-borne diseases we have in the U.S., gives uh, signs and symptoms so that providers can recognize these diseases. Um, and it also has information about where the diseases occur. So mm -hmm. if a patient mm -hmm. comes in, you might want to know what disease could this possibly be and gives recommendations for treatment and other things. So this is a, a handy reference guide for physicians. And as you mentioned, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, we've recently um, um, produced a uh, clinical training module for Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is a uh, probably the most serious tick-borne disease in the United States, and it um, can be rapidly fatal in people who have it. So it's important that it be recognized early and the proper treatment given as soon as possible. And for this reason, we've developed a, a clinical training module that um, healthcare providers can get continuing education credit to understand how to recognize the disease and treat it properly so that we don't have the fatalities from it here in the U.S. Yeah. Um, and. I saw this sign <laughs> posted when I went on a trail recently. I thought it was great. It's a great idea. What else is CDC doing to help uh, increase awareness of uh, preventing tick-borne diseases? Yeah, so prevention of uh, tick-borne diseases is largely about preventing tick bites. There are no vaccines for any of the tick-borne diseases in the United States. so. Um, what we really encourage people to do is be aware of ticks and to um, try to prevent tick bites. And you can do that by using an EPA-registered repellent. Mm -hmm. um, we, we encourage people to go outdoors, but when you come inside, it's important to check for ticks. Um, showering soon after you come inside is a great idea. It can wash away ticks that are not attached and also give you a chance to find any ticks that are attached which should be removed um, as soon as possible, mm -hmm. which um, you can do easily by um, grasping the tick with tweezers and pulling it um, straight out of your skin. Um, you don't need any special um, devices or chemicals to do that. Um, and we also recommend you can put your clothes in the dryer for 10 minutes on high mm -hmm. heat and that will get rid of ticks. So there are some easy steps you can take to prevent tick bites. 
but occasionally you will get a tick bite anyway, and we um, recommend that um, you be aware of that, that if you get uh, ill within the next week or so, that you go seek um, medical attention and tell your health care provider that you have noticed a tick bite mm -hmm. and they can uh, treat it appropriately. So it's important to be aware of um, tick-borne diseases Jesus. to prevent serious consequences. Sure. So if, they, if somebody else wanted to know more about tick-borne diseases uh, and what else they need to know, where, where would you tell them to look for information? So um, the best place is our website, which is cdc.gov forward slash ticks. Mm -hmm. And there you can find um, information about a variety of tick-borne diseases, including the tick-borne disease manual, but also um, a lot of useful information for, for everyone to understand how to recognize and prevent uh, tick-borne diseases. So it's all on there at cdc.gov slash ticks. Slash ticks. Okay. Right. Thank you so much for joining us, Gil. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. See you next time on Beyond the Data.